Okay guys, well everybody seems to like a good post bag video, so what's in the bag? Hopefully <laughs> Excuse me why my dog just runs down the stairs Hopefully what's in the bag is something which will help me to resolve an issue that I've had for some time And what's in the bag is a device that will help me decide which of my four or five digital voltmeters is correct and actually is telling the truth. What this is is a broken, unfortunately, is a broken, <laughs> pause. What this is guys, is a device that's based on the AD584 voltage provider, voltage, it's basically as a device that gives out an exact voltage of five volts or 4.5 volts or 10 volts or whatever. Uh, you push the button and it gives you a, a different voltage, different readout. Now, it's supposed supposed to be it, was, it wasn't supposed to be broken. Yeah. Let's see what's get the rest of the bits out of it. So hopefully the um, precision of the voltage will not be affected by the fact the case is broken. I suspect it'll be all right. I guess that's what you expect when you buy something from China and it comes in a plastic case. So anyway, the idea behind this is you put in five volts or whatever it is into the battery and put a couple of banana plugs in here and you're able to get a very accurate voltage from this. And the reason I need that is because I have one, two, three, uh, and another one. Four meters, multimeters. And every one of them, if I put them on a voltage, gives me a different reading. So what I want to do is to find out which of these four meters is the most accurate. I'm not going to say which of them is accurate, I'm saying which of them is the least inaccurate. Like I say, every one of them gives me a different reading when I put them on a, a battery. And being able to get read batteries down to a reasonably accurate level is important to me. A cell like this, which is a, a lithium ion cell, should never be allowed to go below 3 volts and should never be allowed to go above 4.2 volts. And that's important that you get that right. 4.2 volts is the absolute maximum. Not 4.21, but 4.2. So I'd rather ha have them at 4.18 volts, to be honest, uh, as the maximum voltage I charge these to. And if your voltmeter is accurate to within one volt or so, that's not much use. It needs to be accurate to within it at least one tenth and preferably one hundredth of a volt. So that's what the idea of this is. It's a reference voltage five and ten volts so that I can tell which of my meters is the most accurate. So what I'll do is take this apart now and find out what's going on. Just take a lid off it. There's not a, lot, a whole lot of point in keeping it together at the minute because it's all broken. So I'll have to use super glue or something to stick it all together. Right. So what's in the bar? What's in it? Uh, you get a, a small lithium battery. And quite a strange design, but that's what it is. Which 
sure. Yeah, lots of things to unscrew. Not sure if done Maybe that that was a silly thing to do. So anyway, what I'll do is get these bits of plastic stuck back together again and try and rebuild this. And we get the battery charged and then we'll see how well it works. As you can see, these are my multimeters, all the ones that I own, uh, in order of age and Possibly quality, I'm not sure. This is the oldest one I own. I probably got this around 2000, 1999, around 2000. Uh, this one, I don't remember when I got that, but I've, it seems to be kicking around for the last 10 or 15 years. I'm sure it's at least 15 years old. Uh, this one I do remember buying. I got this because I wanted to be able to read current without disconnecting the at the time it was um, solar panels and I wanted to read the current of solar panels without disconnecting them. I also wanted to be able to read the current of my e-bike without disconnecting leads so that's why I got a clamp meter where you can read the current through the clamp. This one I bought about five or six years ago maybe slightly more. This is it was about 35 pounds something like that. And this is the most recent acquisition, purchase. I got this from, I think, AliExpress. Either AliExpress or eBay, I can't remember. This is quite a, quite a nice meter and probably the most expensive meter I've ever bought by <laughs> maybe a factor of five. This was over 100 pounds. But it is a very nice meter and works very well. At least, I think it does. The purpose of this video is to discuss this little device. Now, hopefully if it'll focus, you'll be able to see in the middle there is a device called an AD584. Let's see if we can't get that uh, in view. Right. I don't know if it's a work or not, but we'll give it a try. Well, that's working well. There you go. AD584. Uh, that is a voltage regulator which puts out a very stable and steady 10 volts, 10 volts, 7.5 volts, 5 volts, and 2.5 volts. So, what we're going to do today, and this was this was bought off eBay for approximately 15, 16 pounds, something like that. I can't remember the exact price. What I'll do is I will put up a, a link to the to the uh, listing where I bought it. You can pay anything up to 25, 30 pounds for these things. And I don't believe there's one jot difference from different from that one. So what I'll do is I'll put up the link to where I bought that and you can see for yourself all about it. In the meantime, what I'll do is I'll hook up my camcorder to a stand and so you can see the voltmeters and I can operate the voltmeters and then we'll just, we'll just check and see which of these voltmeters is the least accurate. Uh, this one seems to be more in agreement with this one but not quite and then this one's slightly different again. So making the assumption that this thing is as good as it claims to be we will use this as the voltage reference and we'll test the four meters that I have here. Right guys, well hopefully you can see all that. This is the device we're talking about. There's a, a battery underneath it. There's a charging port here. So charge it with a standard phone charger 
and uh, once you have it charged then I don't know how long it'll last because I don't, know how, I don't know how long the battery lasts because I haven't actually run it down yet but be aware that if you do want to order one of these in the case it's quite possible the case will end up broken when it arrives and you'll have a job to fix it but it was fun I didn't mind so anyway let's turn it on and it should immediately come on at the 10 volts option so what we'll do is we'll start with the voltmeter on the left and we'll see just what that gives us now I should have proper banana plugs and stuff I don't so we'll just work with what we've got and there you can see it is showing 9.97 volts try the second one now and it is showing 9.94 volts Let's see what this one does. This one is showing. It's about something. One of them is about to reset. Stop it. Right, we're on DC. 10.04 volts. So this is 9.94, and this one's 10.04. So that's a 10 volt difference. Ten, sorry, a tenth of a volt difference between those two meters. Let's see what the most recent and most expensive one says. Ten volts exactly. Uh, ten point, uh, ten point not something maybe. Ten point not not five maybe. This one appears to be the most accurate, or at least it appears to agree with our reference. This one is point four of a volt, point not four of a volt over. This was 0.03 of a volt under, and this was 0.06 of a volt under. So you can see why I was getting confused, especially when I was using this meter and this meter. I was getting a tenth of a volt difference, and I then didn't know what to believe. So that's why I bought this, was so that I could actually confirm just what is the, uh, the most accurate meter I have. So what I'll do is I'll push the little button now, which should bring us over to this option. And we'll try this one again, and that should be, I think it's 2.5 volts. 2.503, so that's pretty close. I'm not complaining about three thousandths of a volt over. Let's see what this says. 2.51, 2 2.50, 2. Uh, yeah, okay. That's not bad. Didn't go to the thousands, but it doesn't matter. Let's see what this one says. It doesn't say anything because I have it set to AC. 2.488, so that's 12 hundredths of a volt out. Wow. 2. For its 88, yeah, 12 hundredths away. I'm gonna try this one now. Once again, no, this one I've always found in the past. Yeah, if it uh, doesn't read properly, turn it off and on again. 2.496. Push the button again. This should be 5 volts. 4.98. 4 .97, 5.02, 5.005, 7 7.5, try again, 7.5, 7.50, good. Must be once you go over a certain voltage it doesn't go down to the 1000th of a volt anymore. 1000th, it's easy for you to say. Uh, 7.53, 7.46, and last but not least, 7.48. Okay, so obviously this is my most accurate meter, so from now on this is the one I'm going to trust. This is my least accurate, so it, it may get flung or I use it for something not important. And these are fairly close, probably closer than I uh, realized to the truth. So 
I'm happy. I'm happy that this was a worthwhile purchase. I have now calibrated my meters. I know this one reads slightly over, this one reads a whole lot under, this one reads slightly under, and this one is pretty close to dead on. So just turn them off. I can't turn this one off, I just have to leave it. You see when I flick it to the off switch, it doesn't turn off. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's, that's good. Hopefully that's been of interest and like I say I'll leave a link to where you can buy one of these if you uh, should choose to do so. As I said they're available from around about 12 pounds plus postage from China. I'm not sure if any uh, local sellers are selling these but if they are they'll be more expensive than that because you can pay even up to 25 or 30 pounds to buy these from China. So. Um, they are useful if you need a voltage reference and that seems to have done the job. So hopefully that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Is that wind scary? Is that a scary wind? Ooh. <laughs> this one.